Jam. Hi everyone, good morning to all of you and welcome to DRDC 2020, the scientific sessions. Alvin Toffler, the American writer said, the illiterate of the 21st century will not be those who cannot write or read, but those who cannot learn, unlearn and relearn. In dentistry also, it's high time that we start relearning and unlearning the old concepts and things. We cannot boast about the things that we learned years back. What is needed is upgrading, unlearning, and learning. This is precisely the reason that we at DRDCA are not having just one or two days of scientific sessions, but almost the whole, whole of the month of November. We, are going, we, are, we have scheduled the sessions for every Thursday, Saturday, and Sunday. And I'll be the one who will be the hosting, who will be hosting these scientific sessions. I'm Dr. Pallavi Mahajan, an endodontist, and a writer and a spoken word art, artist, and of course, your host for scientific sessions. Uh, we have almost 40 speakers on board with us from na uh, national and international speakers, and uh, which means that we have 40 plus amazing sessions waiting for you all. What you need to do is download the app, register yourself, and do share the session, do share about the sessions and your feedbacks with your friends and connect them also. Because uh, learning has no boundaries, right? And in this seminar, in this uh, conference, we have speakers joining us from all over the world and you are going to get a lot of knowledge. We have two sessions scheduled for today. Uh, Saturday, Sunday, weekend sessions. Uh, there'll be two sessions, one in the morning and one in the evening. Uh, just evening. Today, two sessions are there. The first speaker that we have is Dr. Sigal Jacobson. She uh, will be taking the morning session. And in evening, we have Dr. Rajesh Ravindranathan. Do share this with your friends uh, because there are chances that you might uh, win a no lace laser machine. Now, there's a lucky draw contest, lucky draw that is happening. Yeah, you can see on your screen. This is the machine that you might win in the lucky draw. The rules are, the lucky draw rules are as follows. You must attend and engage all live scientific sessions, which means that you have to share it with your friends, invite your friends, comment when the speaker is speaking, and definitely put your questions also. You have to participate in any one contest. Contest details are there on DRDCA page as well as app. You have to install Eventy app and then enter DRDCA 2020 event. You have to subscribe to the newsletter, join the FB group of DRDCA. All proofs and screenshots must be emailed to DRDCA2020 at the rate of gmail.com for qualification. 
if you're not able to follow the rules, you can still go to DRDCA page and all the rules and every detail is there. The first speaker that we have today is Dr. Sigal Jacobson. She's joining us from Australia. She's an aesthetic dentist and founder of Uvenier and Paladic System. Dr. Jacobson is an internationally acclaimed lecturer with more than 25 years, right, 25 years of experience in aesthetic dentistry. She has been recognized as one of the top 25 women in dentistry. She is a key opinion leader for major multinational dental companies like GC and Ultra Dent. The most important and interesting part is that uh, apart from being a dentist and lecturer, as I mentioned, she is the founder and event inventor of this amazing Uvenier uh, system. It is a unique template system for creating direct composite restorations in the aesthetic zone. Dr. Jacobson is also a member of the Australian Academy of Dentofacial Aesthetics, a member of American Association of Women Dentists, a member of the American Academy of Aesthetic Dentistry, a member of the Dental Speaker Bureau. She, in this lecture, she is going to teach us basically how to create beautiful and durable composite restorations in the aesthetic zone with the Uvenier system. The new technique to create a freehand veneers will result in uh, amazement to your patients um, that will make your patients your biggest fan so yeah uh, please join hands and uh, let's welcome virtually let's clap and let's welcome dr sigal jacobson on screen a very good morning to i think th there the time is four o'clock right yes we are in melbourne australia and it's uh, four uh, four thirty eight in the afternoon. Okay, so good afternoon to you. <laughs> How's the weather here? Okay. The weather here actually today is really nice. It's a sunny day. Okay. Uh, we just uh, finished winter and we're going into summer. <laughs> oh, that's nice. It's always good to connect like this. <laughs> Over to you, Dr. Jacobson. And uh, I am looking forward to this lecture. <laughs> Thank you, me too. And I'm very excited to be lecturing, I think, to hundreds of dentists right now. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we are DCA. Um, thank you for inviting me. And uh, I would like to share with you uh, some tips, some tricks uh, for my lecture. So basically, uh, I run lectures that go for six hours. Today, we're only going to have about 45 to one hour. A minutes to one hour, which uh, I'm going to give you the highlights, some highlights and tips and tricks for my six hour lectures. And if you have any question afterwards, I would love to hear it. We're going to talk about composite veneer in the Ontario area. Uh, and then I'll show you how to work with the, the new system U veneer, the U veneer extra, which is a new, another kit we added to the system, uh, and uh, some Paladex and other uh, things that I think you will. Uh, be interested to, to learn and see what's uh, new in the innovation of composites. Uh, because the composite uh, as a material uh, develops a lot in the latest years. And I think uh, we also need to develop and improve with our method. So it will not be so difficult. We want to do it simple, enjoyable, more efficient, the whole bonding uh, and anterior veneers system. So. We can start with the, the lecture right now. Again, thank you for joining me. Um, and I'm going uh, to start with a survey. A survey in the USA in 2015 uh, showed that one in four people avoid smiling due to the condition of their mouth and teeth. 59% uh, says it's the cost, why they didn't uh, go and fix it. Uh, some are afraid of the dentist, but mainly from the cost. Those are cases that are here right now on the screen. Uh, they come, they came to my uh, clinic, and I wasn't the first dentist who saw them. Obviously, they're not young kids. And why those patients were not attended up till now with any dentist that they, they, they've seen? Why do they have to uh, walk with their when they smile and cover their smile when the solution is so simple? And I think the answer is many dentists, they think that they have to do the full porcelain work because if they will do any composite bonding, it's an inferior solution 
to porcelain. And, uh, and I think that there are missing opportunities, uh, of course, uh, earning opportunities as well, because every patient, almost every patient, or in the survey, they say one in uh, four patients come to your clinic. This is an opportunity for your increase your income, but it's a great opportunity also to make those people happy. Uh, and uh, I think it's very important as a dentist to understand that we have a role in making our people happy, which will make them more healthy uh, and confident. Uh, so, but as we said, a lot of dentists, they, dentists, they think that if they will do the porcelain veneer, they give them the best. And it's like, I want to drive a Ferrari and I will not drive Kia, I will not give you, but they, Kia is as well, it's good. It doesn't mean that you have to just give them porcelain veneer. They are more expensive and they have their downsides as well. So I'm going to talk to you about the differences between the porcelain veneer and the composite veneer in this slide. With porcelain veneer, we have to reduce uh, tooth structure. Yes, it is minimally invasive, and yes, we don't have to remove a lot, but we still have to reduce from incisal area at least 1.5 millimeters. With composite veneers, sometimes I don't even reduce nothing from the teeth. There is no reduction. Uh, it's called additive dentistry. Porcelain veneer, I have to do set of teeth. Uh, with composite veneer, I can do one tooth. I can do half a tooth because composite material breaks the light. The light, when it, the refraction of the light is more natural like the our enamel. Well, porcelain veneer is not. That's why we have to do six or even ten. Porcelain veneer it is final and irreversible. When it's a break, you cannot fix it. With the veneer or the composite, it's a phase procedure. They can always change to porcelain veneer in the future. And uh, it's great with young people or people who don't want to do six teeth. They just want uh, one tooth. And if it's great, we can fix it in the mouth, which is less of a problem. Porcelain veneer, they are resistant to wear and stain, which is wonderful. But what happens if the patient grinds his teeth? What if they are heavy abraxist? Uh, then we have a problem, but we don't have a problem with the composite material because it will wear down with their teeth. And it's a great opportunity also to, to examine the patient. And when he, in the future, if they see that the wearing down is not happening, then they can do the composite veneer, the porcelain veneer option. Porcelain veneer, the survival rate of five years is 93%. Studies shows that composite veneer is 85% after five years. And I can tell you from my experience, and I've been doing it for many, many years, 89 uh, success rate uh, percentage sounds to me very correct. Uh, they are long term. Uh, maybe they will stain a little bit or sometimes they may cheap a bit. But overall, the satisfaction of the patient is very long term. Uh, and of course, the biggest thing, the cost. Uh, the porcelain veneer costs about four to five times more than the composite veneers. So they are less affordable. That means we have less uh, acceptance from our patients. Downsides, contraindication of porcelain veneer when a patient comes with high carrier susceptibility. I would prefer to do composite work if they're very young. If they have a periodontal disease, why would they uh, invest in uh, teeth that in a few years probably going to come out and have implants uh, in a single tooth case? It's very hard unless you have the best laboratory to do one porcelain veneer uh, to, to compare it to the rest of the dentition. And even if you do one, in the future, the teeth, the natural teeth will change the color and the porcelain will stay out and it will be very obvious that it is there and of course the contraindication of financial if patient cannot afford it with composite veneers there is hardly any contraindication the biggest one if they don't have enough uh, enamel to bond of course because we are relying on bonding whereas porcelain veneer we can do kind, kind of crown veneers and we can have more retention a uh, different retention than bond mechanical retention uh, and of course, we, when I have a patient with high expectation, when they come to the clinic and they say, I want the Hollywood white teeth that will stay for long term, uh, I wouldn't uh, recommend to promise them and give them composite veneer. First of all, composite veneer, they look more natural than not that Hollywood. 
uh, and also uh, long term, they will come down a little bit with the color. But it's still great if they still want to portal and veneer later, they can change into it. The problem with composite veneer, they have a lot of benefits, but it's a very challenging procedure. As, as you see, this case uh, can everybody, dentists are doing it. You know that this can take two to three hours to do. And this was my problem as well. I wanted to find a way to make it more efficient and faster. And I tried a lot of things in the market and I couldn't find. So I decided to invent it myself. And that's the new veneer system, which is a template system to create direct composite veneers, mock-ups, even temporaries for your porcelain work. And uh, in this lecture, I will show you a lot of things, how to work with the U veneer system, but it's not enough to have the U veneer. You have to know how to do these other steps in order to get the perfect restoration. And these are the steps that we're going to uh, touch today in this lecture. You have to be able as a dentist to evaluate the aesthetic issues of patients when they come to you. You have to look at the pink and the white. Pink means the gum aesthetics and the white. And then you will, you will be able to, and you will have to know how to convert it into treatment, giving the patient all the options and not give them only on the options. You have to know to do the options. And if you don't know how to do the option, if you don't do, for example, orthodontics, you have to have a team to refer to. Uh, in order to evaluate the aesthetic issue, you need to be familiar with the smile design rules if you want to be a cosmetic dentist. And you know you have to know how to master all these treatment options. Second thing is the planning. What is the shade selection, the right composite? How to do a mock-up to plan to be predictable? Also the correct preparation. How do I prepare a tooth for composite? They don't really teach us that in school. And always think minimally invasive how to execute, how to do the, the isolation, the bonding, the curing light, and all of this I'll show you as well. And of course, the final occlusion tuning, which is very important as well. Let's start with the first thing. So how do I approach a patient and I con how to convert them into cosmetic work? And I'm talking about the new patients, the one that just came to your clinic, not for, for, for aesthetic issues, just for a regular checkup. You will see that they're af afraid to smile. You will see the aesthetic issue. How you will approach them without sounding that you are trying to oversell or you, you will embarrass them. So I'll give you some tips. If a patient comes to you with one, let's say one of those uh, issues, um, have a photo album in the waiting room, if it's your work or even other people work, uh, to show them what you can do, show them what's porcelain veneer, what's composite veneers before and after. When they sit outside, they see what you can offer. You have to show them TV if you have a TV or just a simple photo album of before and after. When a patient comes to your clinic, on the history form, I have two questions. Then this helps me a lot. Are you satisfied with your smile? And then they tick yes or no. Or do you show your teeth when you smile? And those two questions are important for me because when they come to the room, this opened the conversation. Oh, Mr. Cohen, you're not satisfied with your smile. I see you tick till you're not. Maybe we'll talk about it after we finish our treatment. And it's very important. You do not offer them any aesthetic treatment plan before you gain their trust. You don't want to sound overselling. They come for another problem, treat the, the problem. They will trust you, they will gain your trust, and then start talking about their issues. And also don't use negative words. I always use positive words. I will compliment them before. And I will say, I will not say, I want your teeth are yellow. I'll say, we can brighten your smile. So don't, because they will remember what you made them feel, and they will not remember uh, what you actually, uh, what's the problem, how they can fix it. Then I do, and this is very important, in this lecture I'll show you, I will repeat these things in, during this lecture a few times, mock-ups. You will, uh, the best thing, and I recommend you, take some composite, apply directly on the gap, on the yellow tooth, on the intruded tooth, on, on the aesthetic issue, and build up the composite with a mock-up. 
you'll get better with, and faster as you go because this takes experience. You can also use the Uvenir. Then when once they see that you close and don't bond, this is just the, like, like a prototype. Instead of using the, the uh, smile design and uh, technology that we have, we can do it directly on their mouth. And then they can take the video of themselves with an iPhone and then you remove it, you flip it out. And it's here you have before and after. And I can tell you that 90% of the patient, when I do direct mock-up, and then they see that this is actually not an expensive procedure, I have, uh, I have this uh, uh, job and for sure, 90% of the patient, they will come and they will do it. You have to suggest them all the treatment option from less invasive to more invasive. And so what is the best treatment plan uh, for the aesthetic issue? I call it the ABC. And because my aim is to satisfy the patient requirements with minimal tooth re uh, reduction and destruction. And what is the ABC? I will always uh, offer them to align their teeth first. Let me go back to the slide before, sorry. Okay, sorry. I have a problem here, a small problem. Okay, one second, let's go back. By the way, guys, you can take uh, your camera and um, I will come up with a few tips that, uh, especially with some material, that maybe you want to take a camera and, and take a shot of this. So what is the ABC? I will always start with aligning the teeth, even if the patient says, I don't want uh, braces, I don't want Invisalign, too expensive. I don't see myself going now with two years of treatments, then I will offer them maybe to bleach, maybe this will help the aesthetic issue, or I can do combination of those two. And if they, this will not satisfy the requirement, the next thing I would suggest is composite, from minimally to more invasive. And only after I exhausted those three options, I will go to the invasive and I will uh, cut teeth and of course do the porcelain, which is still minimally invasive. I'm not doing crowns, I'm doing veneers. And I'll show you this ABC on those two cases. Um, the first case is she came to my clinic. Uh, her teeth were not uh, white enough. She was not happy with her smile. One tooth was intruded and one was chipped. Uh, other dentists, they uh, offered her six porcelain veneers. And I offered her, again, ABC align. She didn't agree. So we bleached her. And then I did only one new veneer, uh, composite veneers on tooth number one, two, and small correction of the chip. She was very happy. She referred me a lot of patients. So don't think that you're losing money. You will gain money by doing those small uh, corrections. They call mini smile enhancements. The other thing as well, this uh, girl, she came to me uh, with, with, obviously you see the problems. And uh, with two composite veneers only and a little bit composite on the incisal of the centrals, we created this harmonized and very natural looking smile. Now we're gonna talk about composite shade selection. And I find that composite shade selection is one of the difficult thing in the, in all the aesthetic uh, restoration in the anterior area. Why? Because we are limited with the, the brand that we have. And uh, we have one A1, for example, and A1 from one brand is not A1 from another brand. Things have a different shade of a value of A1 or A2. And sometimes we finish the case, which is beautiful. We, we've done the, the, all the anatomical and the color is wrong. So I'll show you, uh, I will show you some of the tips that I, uh, what, that if you follow them, I most probably you will get the best blending of the component with the tooth. So first you have to understand that it's not enough to take the Vita shade guide and apply it into, onto the tooth and say, yeah, the patient is B1. I'm going to take the B1 composite because it's completely different shade sometimes because there are other parameters that affect the final composite shade. First of all, the underlying tooth and the reflection of the mouth, the dark reflection on the mouth, if it's broken, or the underlying tooth, it will affect the, the final color of your composite because the composite today, they are very chameleon. They will take the color from the tooth. They will reflect through it. And so B, sometimes A2 will become A3 when you apply it on a dark tooth. 
the curing light after you cure composite it can also change color it sometimes become more translucent the value is dropping also final polishing the thickness how much thickness of composite we apply this will affect the final color and of course which brand of composite we are going to um, use because every brand as you can see is very different and this is for my uh, draw some of the composite that i use and they are all a1 and look at the difference so a1 is not a1 is not a1 that's why you cannot just take the beta shade guide and say he's a1 and they take this one gram and and think that it will match because it won't there is also what's called value and opacity of a composite there is composite that have low value. This is both of them. This composite, they both A1. One has more uh, uh, value, which means it's more opaque, and one has low value. So it depends what you want to get as well. So I, this is the five tips that I collected, how to select the right co correct shade. First of all, a composite is, a, and choosing the right shade is a lot of experience. You have to practice it. And do a lot of mock-ups on the patients when they come. This will get your eyes used to it. Um, you have, um, and don't change your composite every uh, six months because it takes time to know your composite. Second of, the second thing is make it simple. I know we learn to do all the layering techniques and about the, it's very complicated. They're not predictable. You can finish layering technique on one tooth and when we do the other tooth, it doesn't look the same because you didn't use the same thickness. Uh, you don't have the same substrate. The, different, the material, the, the, the teeth underneath have different colors. So I go very simple. I use one, maximum two layers. And uh, so, and also my, my inventory is very, very basic. I have only about five to six shade, shades that I use. And I found that it will cover most of the, the patients. And the reason is that I use a different value. Value is translucency of brands. So as you see, this looks complicated, but if you look at this is my draw and it has B1, A1, A2, A3, bleach white, you can't hear me, uh, bleach white, and some high fill flowables, and of course, a posterior composite. Uh, can't hear me. And, uh, then my third tip is purchase the same shade from different brands. And then you'll see you have different A1 and this will cover more patients. Another tip is you can create your own accurate shade guides from your own composites. You can do it if you have the Uveneer kit, you apply composite into the Uveneer and then you just uh, stick it into those uh, teaspoons, write the color and you have it. And my last and most important tip is to create direct mock-ups. And that's, uh, again, I'm repeating, this one of the most important things in my clinic that we do. Uh, every even class, simple class five, we will apply the composite without etching and bonding directly on the tooth. Sometimes we apply it also on the gums when we want to increase the gum level with the laser. And I'll show you how it's done in, in, uh, in the next slides. Uh, you can also put composite on the gums and evaluate where you're heading. Have a predictable dentistry. And this is this mock-up is also doing, it's good for the shade selection. You can flip it out and then try another shade and then another shade until you, uh, everybody are happy with the shade that we're going. Only sometimes it takes me 10 minutes to do. And, and this is very important because this is called predictable dentistry. Uh, everybody will be happy. There is nothing worse than finished composite after you etch and bond and it's the wrong color. So do it before. Don't think it's wasting too much composite. Just add it to your treatment plan. So the next thing, how to uh, prepare the tooth for direct composite veneers. Um, stay on enamel. It's better, don't try not to uh, go on dentin. If you can, avoid dentin. No incisal, no interproximal reduction. We are not doing Portland veneer. Do not remove from the incisal part. 
finish your the prep above the gingiva so it's super gingival preps no finishing line no chamfer no of course no shoulder um you can finish knife edge just a regular knife edge finish and the buckle reduction they ask me a lot of time how much buckle reduction you're doing um when you do composite veneers when that depends on the case and your aim if your aim is to go very from a3 to bleach white you have to remove more because it has to be thickened if you want to stay with the same color of the tooth don't remove too much if the tooth is intruded then i don't remove anything for example in this case there is no preparation needed so if the tooth is intruded just rough the tooth apply etching i use sunblast as well and then etch bond and that's it this is your preparation and this is a simple scheme that i prepare you will you can remove one millimeter to 2.1 if you want to mask the dark tooth so you have to remove more you will lose uh, you will uh second sorry um sorry yeah uh, you will uh, remove much less if you uh, just want to change the shade a little bit, so 0 0.5 to 0 0.5, but if you don't want to change the prep, the shade, sorry, and if the tooth, and you want to keep the same shade, don't remove a lot. You don't need to. Uh, and this is a, another situation. For example, how would I prep here? I will not prep from nothing from the lateral incisors, from 22 and 1, 1 2 and 2, 2, because they are intruded. And I will cut the distal and the, the sides of each tooth and it's okay to cut also don't think they cut they trim the interproximal sometimes as well nothing happens and then you can start building your composite in the right uh, proportions uh, i showed you another slide that i think it's important how to prepare factors class four preparation and uh, because the problem that we always finish many times not always we finish with this dark gray line uh, the way to do it is, first of all, to use more opaque composite brand. As I told you, some are more opaque, some brands are more translucent. Uh, round the sharp edges, bevel. And then I extend the preparation into the tooth, roughly the same size of how much we fracture. So if the fracture is, let's say, 10 millimeter, eight millimeter, my prep will extend to the same size, if not more, to give it more attention. And you can even go and veneer the whole tooth when it's a big class four. And I do it many times. It will look just seamlessly beautiful uh, without this gray area. And the last thing, how to create the anatomically correct buccal surface. So the, the, the anatomy, the fascial planes, uh, the line angles, the lobes, the grooves, the parikamata, how do we create it? And this is a big challenge. It's time consuming. Uh, it's not predictable. Many times we finish uh, the restoration very flat. And we don't get this tertiary anatomy that we, we like to see. Well, not sometimes not even the secondary anatomy. And this is where I came with the uvenir system. And because I found it just hard. And I wanted something predictable because predictability in the cosmetic dentistry is very important. And as you see here, there are, there are, this is the template system, the uvenil template system. There is two sizes. Now I'm going to talk about this. This is the section of the lecture that we talk about the uvenir. Uh, this is made out of a fiberglass. They are autoclavable or just reusable. You can use them anytime as you want. Uh, there is a center line on the outside of the template, so you can position it parallel with the middle of the face, and you have two sizes, large and medium. And I'm going to show you a short video of how it works. And this is the juvenile system, premolar, two premolar, maxillary and mandibular teeth. So of course you remove the carriers and you rough the tooth. You will rough it 
with a diamond girl, curl pose diamond girl, and you apply separation between the teeth. Then you edge, and normally you, you, you must edge uh, more than 15 seconds, and then till less than 15 seconds, and you apply the curing light for 10 seconds. After you apply any composite you wanna you wanna apply, you take the UV mirror and you are pressing it onto the composite that is on the tooth. When you press it, you're actually breaking the bubble and you block the oxygen inhibition layer as well. You cure through the template. You remove it. You can also remove the excess before you cure. And you use the interoxymal saw and the interoxymal polishing these strips. The uveneer has the uveneer has two sizes. It has the large and it has the medium. And this is the original kit. We're going to have now. I'll show you the new kit. But the original kit uh, has large and medium, premolar to premolar, including the second premolar. So you can actually do ten teeth, uh, upper and lower teeth, and then another. The second row is the medium. Again, the same thing. So this pretty much will cover many, many cases because it's according to the smile design rules. Uh, it's, as you said, it's reusable. Uh, it has a non-stick surface, so it will never stick to your composite. It has a center line on the outside, of course, not on the inside. Um, it's very durable material. If you lose one, you can hold a single. And they're all based on the smile design proportions, which usually it's um, when the smile design proportion is the central. It's coming in. Sorry, guys. I have to do it. Keep coming like that. A second. I'm sorry about this. So, as we said, each template is according to the smile design rules. And proportions, which means central incisors. All it's all starting from the central incisors are uh, usually will be when I say usually according to the small design rules. The beauty will be 10.4 millimeter to 11.2 millimeter for the central incisors, and this is the length, and the width will be 80 percent, so it will be about eight millimeters. Another thing with the template, we are actually blocking the oxygen inhibition layer. And what is the oxygen inhibition layer? It's basically when we are curing composite, the oxygen will interfere. If it's not blocked with anything like glycerin, uh, and this is gonna create a sticky surface because not of the monomer become polymers. And the thing about that, that if you don't block the oxygen inhibition layer, it will stain more and it will wear more. So even if you have, if you don't have the uveneer, you should apply some glycerin or just polishing away, polish this layer. The second layer that didn't touch the oxygen will be actually the layer that will not stain. With the uveneer, because you block the oxygen inhibition layer, there is no problem. What do I use for interproximal separation? I use the matrix, which is cellulose strips the metal matrix, Teflon tape, and in many cases, I don't even use uh, anything. I just use a, in, a interproximal carver, and I'll show you, and then I'll use my saw. Do I use rubber dam or not? Do I use wedges, the reduction core? And this question that a lot of time I'm getting, I don't use wedges because I find that they create black triangle and they will control where my composite will go. Um, I, with the uvini you don't really need, you will have the embrasure that's coming out from the gums with the uvini. Uh, rubber dam, of course, the highlights of uh, isolation today and the gold standard is to have a rubber dam. 
some cases I will, some cases I will not. The cases that I cannot use rubber gum is those cases when the tooth is not in the right direction and I have to correct the angle. I have to see the whole picture. I have to see the pink, the gums. Yeah, I have to see the zenith point in the gum. I can't, the, the rubber gum will mask it. By saying that, I've been doing composites for 20, more than 20 years, uh, many times without rubber gum. I didn't see any failures, but still it is the gold standard. Do I use retraction core or not? Um, most 99% of my cases will be without retraction core because I don't want to finish my composite under the gums. I want to finish them at the gum level. I don't want to retract the gums. Plus, when I remove the cord, many times you get bleedings, and those bleedings are going to stain uh, the peripheral area of, of the composite and the gum at the gum level. So bleeding is not so uh, good when you do the first 24 hours of the bonding. What can you use the U veneer for? It's not only for direct veneer. You can use them for mock-up. You can use them for provisional. Uh, you can use them for guide, guide for your gum lift if you have laser or scalpel. And I'll show you this in the next slides as well, some cases. So let's start with some real cases. When I do uh, any composite veneers with U veneer or without U veneers, I mainly try to do only the upper teeth. And at the lowers, I try to bleach if possible. Um, the upper teeth, composite veneers, they doesn't get any occlusion on top so they will uh, fracture much less. The lower one might chip more, but you can still do the lower one with the U veneer or with any composite veneers, but with, with the upper uh, jaw, I can see much, much higher success rates. So this case is called reverse smile. As you can see, her smile is not following her lower lip, doesn't have the curve. Those teeth are intruded. So you hardly need to, to um, and we only did two teeth. They, they did only two teeth here, they are intruded. You choose which template it is, the medium or the large. It's very easy to choose because you just apply them on the tooth and you see that it's covering the distal and the mesial. The length usually is something that determined by, uh, by the patients later if they want it to ideal um, proportion or they want them shorter. Just take your disc and then you can cut them. Uh, so you rough the surface first, uh, sandblast it. I, I use the sandblast. You don't have to, but it's really nice if you can sandblast. It increases your bonding. Uh, you create uh, etching for 15 seconds. And you apply the bonding. And with the bonding, it's very important. Scrub it for 10 seconds. Dry for 10 seconds. Let the, it's acetone. Uh, uh, and the alcohol, if there is to evaporate uh, from the from the bonding material, and then when the surface is glossy, then you can cure it. I use the universal bonding system. Uh, I use the one from Bisco, and and uh, because it has the 10 MDP, it's a chemical bonding. In case you have any dentin exposed, it's amazing. How to create the halo effect with the U veneer? So first I apply the dentin layer or the more masking, and then I apply a little bit triangle uh, to create the halo effect before you cure. Then you apply a little bit of high fill flow. I like to use the Genial Universal Injectable by GC. It's a beautiful shine. It has to be a high fill flowable so it will not stain. And I press it on top of the uncured composite that is on the tooth. In this way, I get the enamel shade and the dentin shade in one, one go. Before you cure, you can remove the excess. And this is what you cure, and then this is what you're going to get. I go with the Softflex disc and then with the buffer to, to shine the whole area. You will have to understand the area that you finish will be shiny. Try not to touch the shine, just the buffer. When I use my other disc, I use, just use it on the occlusion and on the palatal side. And this is when, it sh when it's uh, finished. And as you can see, uh, she, she had, now she can show some uh, teeth when she smiles. And uh, it's a beautiful uh, smile. And that's the case that we did on a patient. 
I would advise you to do one tooth at a time. When you do composite veneers with or without your veneer, just do one tooth at a time. So here I did the etching, bonding. I put separation between the teeth, the metal, and I apply the composite directly on the tooth. This is the high fill flow, the genial, and I apply to get the enamel shade and the shine from this high fill flow. Again, etching, bonding, and composite on the tooth. When you finish one tooth, then you will do the other tooth. Again, apply the tooth, that's the genial on top. It's a bit too much we put, it's fine, we can clean it. Take your time, it is so fast anyway, the procedure, that you can take your time doing other things that you're not doing before. Then the softlex on the incisal. And here is a happy patient. Now, the question that I'm getting, how do you finish the case? Polishing and finishing. So I like to use the diamond polishing and uh, paste, the softless disc by 3M. I like to use an interpoximal saw between the teeth um, and uh, some on the interpoximal, I like to use uh, the just very high fine polishing uh, burrs extra fine polishing burrs. By the way, studies shows that if you uh, use the buffer, which is a cotton, it's like goat hair, on any of your composite with a diamond paste, it will stain much less in the future. But there is one thing that I use all the time. It's called the interpoximal carver. You can buy it in Freddy or there's other companies. I have the Cosmodent one. It's so thin, it's like paper thin. And when I have this interpoximal cover, uh, sometimes I don't even use the the any 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 separation between the teeth. I just curve it between the teeth, and then I use my saw. You can still use the Teflon tape and the Mylar strip if you choose to. You can use the Uvenir for as an implant dentistry provisional. If you have an implant, you can put the abutment, the temporary abutment, just take composite, apply on top, move in here from the back, and you can use your fingers at the, at the back, at the palatal side. Now the big thing is the mock-up. And uh, most of my cases are done with mock-ups. Most of my patients are very happy to do mock-ups, of course, if they come for other things. And when we finish their treatment, I tell them, look, I want to try to see what I can do for your aesthetic issue that you mentioned when we talked about. And I'll take a little bit of composite and it's called in-chair composite build-up, which will simulate the smile. It's done without etching, without bonding, directly on the patients. Sometimes you can explain to the patient that it might not be the right shade because you don't really want to start now uh, uh, investigating the shade. But you tell them that's roughly how it's going to end up especially with gaps, it's easy. Now, this is my uh, patient, uh, Tiffany. And uh, she, as you can see, see here, I'm gonna show you her case, but I use the, my mock-ups for motivational, for marketing tools. I, I use them for predictable dentistry. I use them for shade and shape selection. As we said, predictable dentistry again. And as a communication tool, I talk to the patient. What do you, what do you think? Is it something you, you will be happy with? Maybe they will not be happy with a regular composite. Maybe they will be so happy saying, no, let's do the composite. Let's do orthodontic. You can fix even the, the teeth. Let's do the gum lift. And in this case, I did a mock-up. This is a mock-up. You see the left? She showed her gum. She has a gummy smile. She has a short teeth. She, um, she used to bite her nails. She made the teeth very short. Uh, the gum are not even. And we did a direct mock-up on top of her gums to see how she can now display less gum when she's showed and maybe bigger teeth. So that's the case before. Let's see. Somebody is in my computer. 
One second, sorry about this again. Okay, so as you can see, she is showing her gums. One second, guys. And yeah, she display her teeth, the gums when she, 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 she smiles. And then what I did, I just took the uvenir, I applied on a tooth, I pressed on top of the gums, and I evaluated the new shape. As you can see, this is the smile design by DSD. Uh, you can do that as well, but I did it directly on her mouth, and this is how we did it. So that's the teeth that uh, she presented. That's one of the uh, mock-up that we did. And in, this is how the second one, how I do it. I apply a little bit flowable on the tooth. I take the uvenir and the composite already in the uvenir. In this case, I don't apply the composite on the tooth. I apply it in the template and I cure through the template. So again, you press the, the uvenir with the composite and it will come off very easily. Some soft flex on the incisal area. Don't forget, I didn't etch and I didn't bond it. Uh, we are heading later to do some gum lift with a laser. So with a laser, so I'm going to use those templates to to use it on the laser gum surgery as my guide. Again, I take the uvenir and then a little bit flowable on the laterals. This shouldn't take you more than five minutes to do. It's a very important step. If you want them to take them easily, you can apply some glycerin or Vaseline on the tooth so it will come more easy. I didn't do it and they still come out. Then outside the, the mouth, don't do it in the mouth if you, if you can do it and do it outside and then try it again. Determine the new length and then I can use them for my gum lift. And now I want to correct the other one. I didn't like the shape of the other one that we did. I press again. Here, I don't like the shape, so I do it again. A little bit of flowable. And here we are after the, after the mock-up. This is called a mock-up. Again, I took it out. This is how you do it. And you can see how much where the gum finished and where we're going above the gums. And this is the and You know, it doesn't have to be perfect just to show the patient, show yourself where you're heading. And this is how we created the gum lift with the laser afterwards. So as you see, I already reduced with the laser the two centrals to the right, because we want to eliminate a gummy smile, right? So the laser is coming. After we determine the two central height, the lateral will be half a millimeter shorter and the canine will be the same length as the uh, central. So canine and central gums are the same level and laterals are shorter by uh, 0 0.521 millimeter, okay? That's the rule. That's the one of the uh, smile design rules is that the gum level of the central and the lateral and the canine is the same. Canine can be a little bit higher. It still doesn't interrupt with the small design. And the lateral should be always same, uh, one millimeter shorter. And this is her case. Uh, after the, the gum uh, lift, you see the teeth are longer and she doesn't display teeth when she smiles. And the next stage, which we didn't do yet, uh, we're still waiting for a little bit of healing. It just happened last week. Uh, we are going to do, in this case, composite veneers with U veneers. How to build the palatal side? You can use your uh, finger, okay? You take your nail and just press it, sorry, your finger uh, and just press it over thumb. Uh, you can also create those silicone keys, but then you have to make a, a, your study model and from the lab, it's just time consuming and it costs more. Or you can have the new invention that I come up with called the Paladex. And this will come up uh, next uh, in January. 
it's already uh, in boxing stage now and uh, it's a great tool it's the only one in the world it's made out of silicon and you have six teeth two sizes same like the uvenir it has a special instrument to hold the paladex um to hold it in and uh, this is the case with the paladex <clears throat> Uh, again, you apply separation between the tooth. You choose the right one. One second, it's a little stuck. And that's a case that I did with the Paladex on the, on the model. I used global composite here. I feel flow again with the genial. You apply the more opaque or the dentin name. A little bit in the distal. We created the box. And dentin. And then you can finish it with your veneer. You can also use the paladex to tuck, tuck composite because it's non-stick surface. Another thing you can do with Uvenir and uh, the Paladex is a composite bridge. If you are missing a tooth, okay, like in this case. So this patient is missing a tooth, we remove the tooth. One way is to cut the, the tooth itself and cement it back. And the other thing is to create a, a splint and this patient needed a splint because his teeth were a little bit wobbly he has a gum issue uh, i used the dental preg and i attached it with fiber composite after etching and bonding of course uh, all of the teeth here is the paladex and we applied it to the back of the tooth the missing area cure it with the light and then apply more composite. And I love to use my tint. You can have the white tint uh, by Care, by GC, a lot of companies that create tints for the fluoroses. Uh, you can have the ochre if you wanna have it a little bit more yellow. And this is the time to do it when the composite is still soft before you cure. You apply the uvenir on top because the uvenir has also the, the lower teeth, the original kit, you polish. This is the Jiffy, and this is how you finish. As you can see, it hardly can be seen or detected because of the tints. Now, a lot of dentists, they ask uh, after they have the kit, they said, uh, they said to us, look, we are looking for extra sizes for the unregular cases, the extra large, the extra large teeth, the square teeth. Sometimes people come with square teeth and they want to keep their square teeth, especially uh, people when they, when they have braces, the kids. Um, at the age of 17, the teeth is still square because the gums are a bit low and they fracture the tooth. So some people, some have square teeth. Uh, and also patient dentists, they really want to see more of less Hollywood, but more natural because now dentistry is going towards more natural look, especially in Europe uh, and in South America. They love the natural, they love all the tertiary anatomy. So we created the new kit, which is called the Uvenir Extra. And the uvenir extra is different from the new uvenir by new additional sizes, shapes. They are only from canine to canine. There's no premolar, there is no lower teeth. They are very, very natural. You can see the left one is the regular uvenir. The right side is the uvenir natural without me creating any, any, uh, any tertiary anatomy or pericamata or surface texture, the, the template have it already in. Because they are scanned from real patients, based on Dr. Uh, Jean Haito. Um, so as you can see, there is a lot of anatomy in it. And they are scanned uh, from Dr. Jean Haito and we collaboration with him and he scanned real patients' teeth. He has 42 model. We chose four sizes to complete, to complement the original kit. We have the large and the medium, but it's a little bit different than the large and the medium uh, in the in the original uvenir as you see it's more natural um, and uh, this is the four sizes you have extra large large medium and square 
uh, if you have the uvenil and the uvenil extra, this pretty much will cover most of your patients. And if the patient doesn't want this anatomy, you just you can uh, just polish it off. Because not a lot of patients, they want to see these uh, lobes and the interesting natural stuff that come in. We love it as a dentist. Sometimes patients don't really like it. Uh, so you have the square. This is the, this is the original uh, scans, the scan from those teeth. You have the, the extra large with 13 millimeter of the central, uh, the medium, and the large, which is a little bit more triangle shaped than the uvenir. And as you can see here, the, the anatomy is very, very much uh, with a lot of texture. This is another case with uvenir extra and another case with uvenir extra. And as you can see, the light breaks also very naturally. And the patient really, the first thing they'll say, oh, it looks so natural. I didn't expect my veneer to look so natural. And the last thing I'm gonna show you is this case that I did uh, maybe four days ago. And, and it's a beautiful lady, uh, her teeth, as you see, they're displayed uh, with gums. They are not, uh, uh, they, they just, uh, each tooth go to different angle and they have gaps. So I'm gonna do a gum lift with you veneer. You can use the template before, just use the templates. And, and then this is before the, after the gum lift, and this is 21 days after healing. Now we're ready to do the composite veneers. I use the sunblast with aqua care. I love aqua care. And, and then you etch, bond. And here is the uvenir extra. I use the square one, even though we increased the gum, they were still square. Apply composite onto the tooth. And that's that, by the, this is my ITC, the interproximal carver. You see, I don't put any matrixes. I'm going to apply some floss now to open the gaps. Don't forget to pack. on the sides where something's missing and look a beautiful and natural shape this is before and after i always whiten the teeth before as well we start and between whitening and composite veneers you have to any bonding you have to wait 10 days and the final touch-ups, what do you, how do you finish before you send them home? I always call the patient one week or two weeks later to do the final touch-ups, but when you just finish it at the, at the chair, avoid direct premature contact in the, in, in the intercuspal position and also create anterior guidance right and left and make sure that nothing, no tooth is uh, premature, has one contact. Just try that few teeth will contact on your uh, on your composite ideally no tooth is uh, going to hit your composite uh, this is if you do class four preferably there is no touch on your composite um, and sometimes it's necessary to equilibrate the opposing teeth it's fine patient are okay with that uh, i always instruct them not to eat and drink any food that can stain for 24 hours and never use their teeth as a tool and if it's uh, pro if it chips a little bit, I explain them. It might chip. It's like an add-on nails with just bonding. And if you need every six months to do a uh, um, maintenance, it's fine. They need to come for maintenance. And also, that's a very good. Uh, this is a very good tool to keep your patient inside the clinic using your hygienist. And then every six months they're coming, and you can evaluate the the condition. Uh, if you want to purchase a uvenia kit, it has in any country in the world through ultra dent dealers. Uh, if you don't know where, who is the dealer, you can go on uvenir.com and there is a order uvenir and you can see all the dealers in the world. Uh, Paladex, it's still not on, but if you can email me your details, I can add you to the list. It's gonna cost a rough, a roughly less than $300, uh, uh, the whole kit. Uh, we have, an, uh, please follow me on Instagram and uh, if you have any question, you can mail it to cigar at uvenil.com. And we have a Facebook group with 6,000 dentists, which I share cases. Everybody can share their cases. And it's called Uvenil by Ultradent. You can add, your, you can add yourself, and I will uh, join you to the group. 
And uh, thank you very much. And I'm ready for any question and answers. Thank you so much, Dr. Jacobson. That was a wonderful le lecture. And I must say that uh, Uvenir Extra was a sweet surprise. I didn't know about it. In fact, uh, there are many people who are asking, they, there are many people, when I shared this with my friends about the Uvenir system, the first question that I got was, does it uh, replicate any tooth and every tooth? Because no two teeth are similar, you know. So I think there they got that answer. Uvenir Extra. When is it launching? When is it coming, Uvenir Extra? Uh, I think it's already launched. You can ask your dealer and uh, it's, okay. it's launched. In, okay. U in USA, for sure, it's launched. I know in the Philippines, it's already launched. And I'm not sure which other countries, but I think it's already launched. They, there is a famous proverb. They, they uh, say necessity is the mother of invention. So I think that's what you did. You could not find it, so you made it. <laughs> so that was that's exactly. really nice. And uh, uh, one more question that a lot of people are asking, especially about India. Though you have mentioned that uh, uvenir.com is the place they can go to, but is there any specification like for India? Is there any specific dealer or specific website they can go to, or the same? Um, in India, uh, I think I can go now on the website and I can find you. No, no, the, the website name. No, there is a lot of dealers in India. All okay. the dealers that have Ultra Dent product, okay. Ultra Dent product, okay. they will. Okay. okay, so all the dealers who are uh, like dealing with Ultra Dent products can give yeah. you idea about this. You can also go to uvenier.com. Any other information, you can contact Dr. Jacobson at uh, info at uvenier.com and uh, go follow her on Instagram as well as join her group. Um, there are a few more questions, uh, Dr. Jacobson. The first question that we have is Dr. from Dr. Preeti from Bangalore. Um, she's asking, what are the most important aspects in the smile design rules uh, for composite veneers that we should know? Yeah, look, the smile design rules is a, it's a huge subject. You have, and you know who knows it the best? The people who do dentures. They yeah. really know the smile design rules, but for Ontario composite veneers, those small design rules that we can control uh, by when, when we do the uveneer, because it's not enough to use the uveneer, you need to finish up uh, with the correct small design. There's not too many rules that you have to remember. I actually have some slides oh, about it. Let me see. And the slide will show you the five basic things that you really need to know uh, about the small design rules. Can you see my screen again? Yes. So we talked about the, 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 the pink, the gums. Central and canine has to be the same level. Lateral should be half a millimeter to one millimeter shorter. OK? And then the next thing you need to know is that the smile design line, the smile line of the upper teeth, has to follow the lower teeth. So they sorry, the lower lip. So the curve of the incisal area of the six to eight teeth and should follow the lower lip like a curve and not straight line. And a lot of patients they want straight that the teeth will be straight, that the canine and the lateral and the central will be the same level. But that's wrong. That will create a weird smile. So make sure that you understand that the canine, the central, and the will be one millimeter longer or half a millimeter longer than the lateral, and the canine are the same level, and this will create this uh, line. Also, the maxillary incisal display on relaxed position should be two to four millimeter, and if the patient are missing it, you can add it on. Very important, the embrasures. And the embrasures, I'm talking about the incisal embrasures. Many times patients say, okay, what you did to me is a bit too long. And then what you do, you take a disc and you just shorten the teeth, but you have to open the embrasure as well again. And those embrasures, those are like triangle between the incisal area of the teeth, whereas in between the central is only a 20, a little bit, I call it 20% from the whole from the gum level to the contact point, and this is, and then it goes bigger 
and bigger and bigger as, as when you go further to the premolar, they're never the same size. This is one thing you have to remember, the embrasures. Um, let me see one more thing. And the central, as we said, the central and the lateral are not the same level. The lateral should be uh, one millimeter shorter. Um, and that's it. That's all what you have to remember when you start, when you start doing cosmetics. Uh, those, uh, those are the rules that are established from a lot of patient scientific measurements. And this is the, the aesthetic concept of beauty. Okay, any other questions? Yeah, I'm with you. Yeah, one more question is there that, uh, what about the maintenance of veneer? How to maintain these veneers? Okay. The thing is that a lot of dentists, when they finish the, 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 the composite veneers or any composite work, they find out that in a few years, it will be very, very uh, yellow. It will stain. There are a few things that they do that is wrong, that is make it happen. A lot of dentists, unfortunately, they still don't understand that bonding material can stain. And they, they take their bonding and they apply it on the teeth to make it shiny. This will stain. If they take flowable composite, not high fill flow on top, it will stain because it has a less amount of filler. The less amount of filler, the more stain. Uh, tea, coffee, herbal tea is one of the worst things. So I always tell the patient, try to avoid not herbal tea, but red wine, especially for the first 24 hours for sure. Um, and what else? Have, ah, a lot of dentists, they under cure the material. Over cure, because if material is not cured, it will stain. Cure it even. You never can over cure, but you can always under cure the material. And uh, so under curing can cause also uh, staining. If you don't polish it, like I said, take your diamond polishing, take your buffer, polish it. This will stop the staining. And of course, the new composite, they stain much less. Okay. Okay. Uh, there's, uh, there's a question from uh, Dr. Uh, Urvashi Tanwar. Uh, she is asking, uh, Ma'am, when you're using uveneers for a discolored tooth and you need to mask using an opaque, do you place it on the tooth and then use uveneer? Wow, or this is an amazing them? question. Amazing question. i really, really happy that she asked it because I forgot to mention it. Dark tooth. The secret to a dark tooth, I used to use opaqueers, just to use those opaqueers, but I found that they fake, they, they, the result is fake. It doesn't look very natural. I stop using those opaqueers unless I have to mask metal. If I have to mask metal, then of course, yes. But if I just want to mask A3 and bring it to A1, B1 or bleach white, the secret is to do it in three layers. Same shade, you do one layer, you cut back, you do another layer, you cut back, you do third layer. Sometimes two layers will be enough. These three sequences and you cue in between will block almost everything and this is the same when you want to paint your wall dark wall you can't do it with one you do the same shade you do one you wait you dry you do second you wait to dry and you do the third one same with the, when we do our nails the first layer will never mask because the particle the light will still go through the particle then we put another masking okay and then another one Right, that was very nicely explained, and I think Dr. Urvishi got her answer. Yes. Okay, one more thing that with the uveneer, you can also do these layers. You do first layer with the uveneer, you cut okay. back, you do second layer, and in between the layer, you apply bond, universal bond, okay. or just wetting resin or any flowable composite cure, and then do the second layer. But always remove the shine from the uveneer. Okay. And after every layer, we have to cut back a little to place, to create the area for the next one. Yes. Okay. okay. So I think Dr. Urushi, your question is answered. And that was a very um, um, uh, good question, as Dr. Segal said. Um, so yes, thanks a lot. Uh, thanks a lot, Dr. Jacobson. All the questions that we have, um, yeah, have been answered. And I think most of the questions you yourself answered during your um, lecture so there are almost three or five questions that i've already you know eliminated them. i heard i heard the whole questions in my life the five <laughs> years, six years i'm doing i heard every question oh. 
So I incorporate it into the lecture. Okay. So, so uh, one uh, one person is asking ki, um, if masking uh, will make the tooth bulky. If uh, we... so it cut back a little bit right. and do another layer. And then let's say you put the UV near and you didn't press too much. Let's say it's bulky. Don't worry, it's composite, it's forgiving. <laughs> do it again. Most of my uvenia cases, I do two to three times pressing the tooth just to make it look, as I said, very opaque, very Hollywood. With the same right. right, right. So that is it. And thank you so much, ma'am. And not just for uh, inventing this uvenia system, but to explain for explaining it so beautifully and all the tips and tricks that you have shared. So thank you so much. Um, thank you so much for having me. Thank you so much. Have a nice uh, evening. <laughs> okay, do join uh, Dr. J uh, Jacobson on her Facebook group. And uh, thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you so much. Any queries, you. you can reach out to her. Uh, and you can reach out to DRDCA uh, mail also. We'll make sure that all your questions are answered. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. Thank you. Have a good day. Bye, Have guys. Thank Goodbye, you. Everybody. Bye, everybody. So that was Dr. Jacobson. Uh, Jim Ron truly said, don't let your learning lead to knowledge, but let your learning lead to action. So what happens is we acquire a lot of knowledge, but then we fog, we don't put it in our daily usage. We don't apply it. So I think these tips and tricks that ma'am shared, shared with us is definitely we can uh, put it in our day to day uh, you know, practice and especially the part of mock up and all those things. So yes, a beautiful lecture indeed. Uh, that was the morning session, guys. Uh, in the even, in the afternoon at four o'clock, we have Dr. Rajesh Ravindranathan joining us from India. And he's going to talk about a very less discussed topic, um, neuromuscular pain. So neuromuscular dentistry. So looking forward to that. Do remember, do remember to download the app if you have not. Share it with your friends, share the lecture with your friends. And join as many people as you can, because this is one of the first kind of conference that is happening for one long month, uh, every Thursday, Saturday and Sunday. Uh, today, the se next session is at four o'clock. So go have your lunch. Um, dentistry with neuromuscular um, uh, angle to it. Uh, also remember you have a chance to win Novolace. So till the time you have in between, what you can do is download the app, register yourself, take participation, ask questions, share it with your friends, tag your friends, uh, join the FB group of DRDCA 2020, and then send these screenshots to for qualification to DRDCA 2020 at the rate gmail.com. All the details are available on DD DRDCA fb group so do join it and i'll see you at four have a nice uh, two or three hours you have in between uh enjoy okay and i'll see you at four sharp bye bye